from there. So excited to see all your faces. Um, welcome to some of our friends from Atlanta. Uh, that's exciting. You, if you have, if you don't know who they are, just look. They're all the ones that are most hyped up right now um, on the on the call, which is really exciting. Um, so to start, though, I have some cool data for you if you want to write this down. Um, we usually don't do data or any of that stuff, but it's mid-year, you guys, and you guys need some data. Um, so in Texas right now, we have 55 agents and 18 staff members that are part of Jordan's team and Sarissa's team, Laura's team, Brandon's team, our Austin team. And that's really cool, you guys, because a few years ago, there was just like a handful of us. So 55 agents now, 18 staff members. We are just growing like weeds. Um, and then together through not only a global pandemic, not just an economic recession and a social crisis, we have closed 300 sales units and $92 million in sales volume between all of these teams so far this year. And it's not even the halfway mark yet. This does not include leases. This does not include pendings. This is just sales, you guys. 300 sales, 92 million in sales volume. Um, we have paid out over $1.25 million in commissions to our agents in Texas. So it's not just important to have a big team, it's important to have a team that makes money. Uh, none of you guys are doing this as a charity. I hope everybody loves what they do, but yet we do this so that we can fund our dreams and our families. Um, and we have 140 more that are pending right now. 140 more that are pending right now. These are huge numbers. And I love what Jordan's team, Laura's team, Brandon's team, everybody is doing right now. So with all of that information, I looked at the numbers and I wanna share with you guys that historically, right, might not be true this year, but historically the last four years, August and September tend to be kind of our weaker months in terms of, of income, agent income. And what we know is that the activities like that we do today, right? They don't show up today. They show up 30, 60, 90 days later. And um, we just don't always have the strongest activities in the summer. Um, so I wanted to highlight some people that were top agents on our teams here in Texas that are killing it right now during the summertime, just so that you can have a different perspective as well. And one thing that I've learned from Gary Keller is he'll say something often, like every mastermind, he'll say this. He'll say, we need to be reminded more than we need to be instructed. We need to be reminded more than we need to be instructed. And what that means is it means that we've probably already heard every script we need to. We probably already know what to do, right? Most of us do, right? Um, and we just need to be reminded of what works and um and that it has an impact on our bottom line um so anyway this morning i want to thank a few people elizabeth gassos from dallas uh, memo uh gara from austin alicia stump from san antonio caitlin wells from austin and casey carlson from austin they're going to share their expertise um i sent out a few emails last night of just like different people I think would add uh, value to a today's call and they responded that they were available and able uh, this morning. And then we're gonna do this every couple of months just to give you different perspectives from Texas. Um, we're gonna do it in like a quick fire format. So each person will have a few minutes to share with us and then we'll go to the next one. Um, so let's see, that will wrap up my little portion. And do I see Miss Elizabeth? Hello. Yes, unmute yourself. Tell us everything that is working for you. And by everything, I mean five to seven minutes worth. <laughs> so um, right now I have six buyers pending and one listing pending, and it's the most I've ever had pending at once. Um, and of the buyers, only one is an internet lead. The rest are all sphere and sphere referral, which is my goal. 
Um, so I thought I would just share with you guys how I get them under contract because I think the also the most homes I've shown each client is probably four. Um, so my goal is to get them under contract quickly. Um, even the one I pended last night, uh, we had our first chat, I think on Thursday. Um, so I'm, that's my goal is to get them turn in as soon as, um, they're, they're excited. You've had their, your appointment and all that. So my first thing is the buyer consult. I do spend a lot of time on the buyer consult. I have made myself an expert at explaining the, um, dreams of home ownership page of our consult guide. And I do use both guides to kind of keep me um, asking as many questions as possible. So I do spend a lot of time on that because I want them to understand um, our goal is to buy a house because our, and our goal is to buy a house for financial reasons. Um, there's a difference in wanting to move and wanting to buy and like what the difference is between the two. So I always want to make sure they understand the financial part of it. We spend a lot of time on talking about the market of like, here's your budget. Um, this is how it is in your particular market. If you need to make a decision while you're in the house and you're not comfortable with that, we might have to make you go to some open houses, drive the neighborhood around, like take all the fear away of making a quick decision because that's just the, the market we're in. So I set a lot of expectations at that buyer appointment that once we are seeing houses, our goal is to find one. Um, I don't know if you guys have concierge mode in your MLS. You guys know in other places i don't know no one's saying anything like shaking heads or anything um but with that i set all my buyers on concierge mode which means that they are not sent like automatic emails i vet every single property i send them and if i see one that really meets their needs i'll text them be like this one checks all the boxes like do you want to go see it um or they have them send them to me like if you come across one that's fine just send it to me um but if it does not match your criteria that you told me i will not show it to you um, and they have to either tell me, well, never mind, we do want to spend more, or no, if it's fall in this area, we do more. I'm like, okay. But um, it's all about expectations. Um, you just kind of have to be firm, like, hey, like you told me not to show you, and I told you I wasn't going to show you anything that didn't have this thing you wanted. Um, and they ended up, you know, being grateful to you. So that's just a way that I get them to see very, very little properties. Um, they already expect that they're going to have to make a decision in the house. And whenever we are, in like literally going to showings before we even step inside. Do you like this neighborhood? If not, we can go to the next one. Yeah, no, I can't see myself living here. Okay, great, let's go. We step inside. What's your initial feeling? Oh, I like it, or it looks really dark. Okay, do you wanna go? Like literally just like spend as little time as possible in the houses that aren't gonna work. If you see that they are liking it, I say this might be the only time we can be in the house. So now let's walk it again with a different lens. We're gonna look at the water heater, the HVAC, the roof. Only after they say like, yeah, okay, I think I want to know more about this house. Then we go a little deeper. And then at the end of every showing, whether the, sh whether the house is wrong for them or right for them, you have to ask, do you wanna make an offer on this one? And even, even though you know they're gonna say no, always ask because then when you go to the next house, they already know you're gonna ask the question. So they're already thinking about, am I gonna make an offer on this house? So it's all about setting the expectations that our goal is to buy a house, not look at houses. And our goal for me is to do such a good job at the, at the buyer consult with setting expectations and asking as many questions as possible. So I'm not running around town, that I'm showing as little houses as possible for my time too. Was that five minutes? Did I go too fast? I was like trying to say everything all at once. Adelina originally only told me three minutes. That's right. I, I had to really <laughs> get down to, to like the nitty gritty. I love it. Quick question. Um, how long is your buyer consult in general, like uh, with a first time home buyer? And what do you do differently when it's, uh, when it's not a first time home buyer? Yeah, I normally do ask them I'm like, hey, this can be as long or as short as you need it to be. If you're a first time home buyer that feels really nervous, I suggest uh, an hour to an hour and a half of your time. And I will literally go through the entire book. I will do the home, uh, home benefits. We will set up their search exactly like, and I explain that process. And I'll also do the day one to day 30 of the actual pending process. I'll do all of it. Um, if it's someone that's, um, sorry, um, my dentist is calling me. Um, if it's someone that has bought a house before, I normally ask them, like, have you bought a house in Texas? When was the last time you bought it? Um, if it's, then I'll do the whole pending process as well. And I'll just kind of go over the home benefit, buyer benefits. I was like, are you comfortable with your knowledge of your tax benefits, your appreciation, and, and do you understand what principal payments are? And if they're 
like, yeah, like I'm good, then I might skip that part. But I always want to ask them, do you want me to go over this um, part exactly? Okay. And um, last question for you. I know that you do really, really well with referrals, agent mm -hmm. referrals, sphere referrals. Like what's your secret sauce? Um, I've kind of tried to set my game up a little bit um, this last couple, like last two months or so, just because I've been so busy. Normally I do like a lot of handwritten notes and thank you texts and stuff. But lately, because I've just been running around, I've started door dashing them treats um, while I'm like in the car driving. So like my friend sent me her mom. Um, so I just literally, I knew that everyone's home right now too. So it's just like, hey, are you home? They're like, yeah. I'm like, go out your door in 30 minutes. There's going to be a treat for you. And I just, whatever DoorDash sends them. So um, I think I sent her donuts. Um, I sent another friend Popeye's chicken sandwich because he's never had one before. Um, I've sent uh, boba tea, like, and I just say like, when are you home? So um, that's been really fun for me and for them just to like, kind of do something a little different because I'm not at my desk to necessarily write out a note and do all that sort of stuff, but I want to do something immediately um, to reward the behavior. Um, so definitely, and I want to do more of that stuff. Also, if someone gets engaged or is pregnant, I've been sending them gifts as soon as I see that, like that Facebook post that, hey, they're engaged, um, especially if it's like um, a girlfriend, I send them a mug and it says like, does this mug make me look engaged? And like it points to their ring. That's been really popular. And then if they have a baby, um, I send them a sonogram frame. Um, if, and that's just through Amazon, just like Amazon, send it directly to, them so that's like my love language and also like how I just like to show love to my people I love it okay and if you send awesome. me an agent referral you get a gift too Beth should have a mug from me <laughs> I love it I love it okay I might come back to you at the end if, I, if we have time okay I've got a follow-up to that okay memo thank you Elizabeth memo are you on bud I'm not. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, okay. what's working for you? What's uh, what's happening in your world and what is working? Yeah, so um, I think um, in the last 30 months, there's been uh, like a collective switch to just being more listing focused. Um, so when going uh, for sellers and going to meet with them and appointments and home valuations and all that, um, that's kind of what I, what I wanted to touch on today. And they think um, mostly from what I've seen um, that values have gone down and it's kind of generally not a good time to sell, right? Um, and so what I really want to say to them is like, have you been out at all? Because <laughs> like what we're seeing is uh, not that, but quite the contrary. Um, and, but what I actually say is, you know, what, what we are seeing right now is pent up demand as everyone is eager to get back to normal. Um, so there is still very low inventory. So really this may be the top of the market and we don't know what our economy will look like later. Um, but right now we are mostly seeing multiple offer situations with our listings if we price it right. I love that. And you've been, um, one thing that I noticed that Memo does is he's gone back to like appointments that he's had earlier in the year and the year before that didn't sign with him. And I think it's really smart to do, uh, to go back to these folks and, and just share the, the pent up demand script with them that this may be a really good time to retry going on the market or to actually go on the market this time. Yeah, exactly. I love that. I love that. Will you share that script one more time? So if anybody was writing it down, they yeah, fill in anything out. Sure. Um, and, and I can post it here on the uh, uh, Slack or, or the chat, but basically it's what, we, uh, what we're seeing right now is pent up demand as everyone is eager to get back to normal. There is still very low inventory, so this may be the top of the market. We don't know what our economy will look like later, but right now we're mostly seeing multiple offer situations if priced right. Cool. Awesome. Love the pent up demand. Everyone's eager to get back to normal. This may be the best time for you. Let's look at the numbers. Awesome. Love it. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. And, and show them the market. I mean, um, you know, they're, they're, invariably there's going to be things around them that look good uh, as far as days on market, 
um, you know, you can you can see if it, if it uh, potentially went pending with multiple offers. Um, and and these are exciting things to share with sellers. Right on, right on. I love it. I love it. Thanks, Memo. Yeah. Um, Alicia, are you on? I am. I don't think I can be as short as Memo. Oh no, <laughs> you. you know, I'm five eight. <laughs> Uh, all right, Sam, so, tell us a what you lot got. Of, a lot of our, um, we're not doing anything special. It's just doing the work, I guess. Um, I am going to tell on ourselves, we have a slew of catching up to do on valuation leads. I'm really glad Bob's not on this call uh, for me to admit in front of them. But I mean, we're talking six, nine, 12 months valuation leads. They hadn't been touched yet. So we've, we've been using the script. Hi, Andrew. This is Alicia with Keller Williams. You probably don't remember, and yet six to nine months ago, you or someone from your household reached out to check on the value of your property. I'm just reaching out to see if you might have a potential interest in selling, because as you can imagine, inventory due to COVID is super low, yet our pipeline of buyers is very large. So if you are thinking about selling, we might actually already have a match for you. And We've been doing that with expireds, door knocking, circle prospecting, just letting people know inventory is low, our pipeline is large, multiple offer situations, and just pl bluntly asking them, are you looking at selling? And a lot of, if it's a no, it's no, not right now, or we were looking at going to refinance. Um, so that's been a really awesome script for us lately. The second thing we're kind of doubling down now that people are getting out and about is systematizing our open houses. So Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we schedule our open houses for the weekend. Thursday, we're circle prospecting for those open houses. Friday, we start our door knocking and signing, nine to 10 signs minimum. And we're actually not just doing the neighborhood, but we're going out to the intersections closest to those neighborhoods. Um, and we're also adding balloons. That's one thing we've started adding that's really been pulling people in. Who knew balloons, guys? Um, and so Saturday and Sundays, if we didn't do the door knocking um, for a certain property yet, we're doing door knocking, making sure the balloons are out, holding the open houses. I think we've really been trying to do at minimum three open houses on the weekend. Um, it's been more like four, trying to squeeze in a fifth one on a weekday night if we can and then follow up um, from the open houses is always on Mondays. We start that follow up. And really, I've been sitting in the open houses following up with people that are really kicked it off with, you know, sending them a text like, hey, thanks for popping in again. So that immediate follow up. Um, some other things we've been doing around open houses is changing our mind shift from, okay, I need to get really good contact information so I can nurture them to okay, I'm going to this open house and I'm going to set one to two appointments for 24 to 48 hours immediately after this open house. And that's as small as, um, it's as small as, hey, I get done here at four o'clock. Is there any other properties that you wanted to take a look at this weekend? Or if I know that they need to have that buyer's consult um, and set those expectations like Elizabeth does, it's, Hey, I get out of here at four o'clock and I would love to sit down and show you what the purchase process is going to look like here for you guys and get y'all started and get the ball rolling so you can find that perfect property before school starts up or whatever the motivation is. And then the last thing I know I'm taking so much time, but um, it's really never underestimating your sphere. Um, you never know where your life is going to take you or where life is going to take somebody else. I started out in Midland two years ago. I had no idea I would be in San Antonio. And we've gotten so much business just from staying top of mind with our sphere, letting them know where we're at. I mean, we're, we've got one sphere closing at the end of the month. When I reached out to her two years ago in Midland, she was in Japan or Italy. I don't even know where she was, but now we're both in San Antonio. So just don't forget your sphere. Um, okay, so I want to just expand on a couple things. Let's start with the sphere real quick. Um, mm -hmm. Often, uh, there's a few of you who are amazing at sphere. I can name you, Judy and Maria and, and just a bunch of people who are just like, you guys just love your sphere and you have no fear around it. And then I got the other side 
uh, where, you know, it's, it's a little awkward to talk to your seer. They'd rather talk to strangers than their seer, right? Like, how do you, like, how do you break the initial ice? So a lot of people that we've had to break the ice with, we hadn't talked to them in 10 years. We had to like reintroduce ourselves to them essentially. And those first conversations, they didn't involve real estate. It was, Hey, I hadn't talked to you in so long. I was scrolling my phone. I saw your number and I thought, man, I'm just going to pick up the phone and see how you're doing. And that's how we've broken the ice. And then a couple of weeks later, we'd follow up. But you know how it is when you talk to your friends and family, you ask them how work is for them. And it's almost natural for them to return. What are you doing, by the way? And you're bringing up real estate that way. So just keeping, keeping it natural. Okay, I love it. And the most impactful thing that I, um, in talking to you before, the open house mindset um, of I'm not going to open houses just to check off something for Adelina or to just get good contact information, right? I'm going to an open house to set one to two appointments from this lead generation lever because I'm leaving my family and it's a Saturday and I'm going to make it count. Um, really enjoyed that. Have you been doing that long or is that some, something more recent? That's a more recent. We were on a coaching call with our coach and she said that's something that she had done in the past and she saw crazy results. Once she had just made that little bitty shift, she, um, she started setting more appointments and it's all about mindset. It's all up here, right? Like we always like, like the different, like everybody's got the same model. Like on this call, we have 63 people on the call right now. Everyone's got the same model, right? We all have the opportunity to do it. And then it's all right here. It's, it's yep. whatever we, we tell ourselves. Last thing for you, um, on the home valuation leads specifically, um, can you, uh, can you go over that script just one more time? It was earlier in the call and it, it's a good script because often we have, we all have those, those people who we should have reached out to a long time ago, but we didn't. And now it's like awkward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thomas, you know, you're, you're telling on yourself like, Oh, you, you sent in this request like a year ago, but I didn't do my job and get to you. So sorry about that. Um, you know, it's just, it's handling those objections on, they probably don't remember this was six to nine years ago. I don't even know what I ate for dinner last night. Um, so certainly they're not going to remember that, but it's, Hey, Andrew, this is Alicia with Keller. Probably don't remember. And yet six to nine months ago, you or someone from your household reached out to check the value of your property. I'm just reaching out to see if you might have a potential interest in selling because as you can imagine with COVID, our inventory is super low, yet our pipeline of buyers is very large. And if you were thinking about selling, I might actually already have that match for you. Boom. Like you, I can tell you've said that a few times because it was just like, it just rolled off your tongue. I said it a lot this morning because I didn't want to stutter. <laughs> <laughs> very smart. Very smart. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing, Alicia. Those are really good. And you guys, um, just to give you an idea, um, Alicia, how many appointments have you guys had this month? Um, I think the last time we counted, Andrew and I had had 17 appointments in the first 15 days. Yeah. So remember, Chris Suarez has been talking to us on Fridays, guys, about like an appointment a day, an appointment a day. And, um, and it doesn't always happen. Like you, you don't go from like, two appointments a month to an appointment a day. Like it, like it, that's probably not going to happen, but, but we talked about it in May. Now we're talking about it in June and guess what? It's starting to happen and it's really impactful to our bottom line and, and to your two small kids. And, and, and it's really exciting. Um, and it's obviously inspiring to us. So thank you. Um, Caitlin, do I have Caitlin? Hey. Hey. Caitlin Wells from Austin. Okay. Tell us a couple things that are working for you. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about open houses. I've had a lot of success with them lately. Um, in our market, we've, we're still having really busy open houses. So I've made a few adjustments to be better prepared at the open house. That has really helped build rapport faster. Um, and and it's, it's been really a good way to lead in and uh, add more nurtures. So with the open house, what I always do now is I make sure that I do a quick CMA of just the general area around 
the open house. So with homes that have sold within the last 30 days, what's under contract and what's actually on the market. Because in the beginning, I wouldn't do that. And someone would come in and say, do you know how much that house down the street's on the market for? And it's like, oh, there's a house for them on the market down the street? No, I don't. So when that opportunity comes up, if it's a serious buyer, they're going to have either questions about the market in the neighborhood or they're going to already know about the neighborhood. So you want to be able to have that conversation quickly and um, approach it with value so that you stand out and you're memorable. Um, something else that I've started doing is trying to reach out to the listing agent, asking if there's anything else that um, I should know that may not be on the MLS. And um, I'll also try to get the seller's disclosure or the survey and just have that on standby. So if someone's asking like, do you know how, how old the HVAC is? Yeah, I do. It's X amount of years old, but let me go ahead and email you over the seller's disclo disclosure real quick. That's an easy way to just send a quick email. Um, and then when I'm going through, whenever I get to the open house, when I'm turning on all the lights, I try to find um, one or two selling points to be able to point out that may not already be noted on the MLS. Um, a good example, I was hosting one of Maria's listings that the builder had built cabinets within the cabinets in the kitchen, which it's so functional and a buyer may not have never seen that if they didn't go through the kitchen and open up the drawers. So it's a really good way to start the conversation and add value and um, build that rapport. So I've really tried to, to make sure that there's one or two things that I have in my back pocket to, to give someone and um, lately I haven't had any issues with getting contact information prior to COVID. You know, now when you kind of position it, like, can I get your information? I'm just trying to keep track of everyone coming through. Everyone has been more than willing to give phone and emails, but like Alicia said, it's in the follow-up. So, um, you know, when you build that rapport, I never leave now the open house without sending a quick email or text, um, immediately following up with my contact info, the property that we met at, and just recapping whatever we may have talked about, um, and just letting them know that I think what, I what does that sound like? Like if you, yeah. you hit it off with me, what would a text sound like just so that we know? Yeah, and I think I had gotten this from Maria a while back. It's a really um, easy, natural text. Just, hey, thanks so much. for wanted to thank you for stopping by my open house at 123 Main Street. Wanted to let you know feel that you can um, send me any addresses while you're out driving around this weekend. I'm happy to pull up some more information for you or open any doors. I'm here as a resource to you. Um, here's my contact information. And if it's via email, even if they don't ask for it, um, I will just do a quick, it takes five minutes just to see active homes that may be similar to the ones that we, I just hosted that they're looking at or something similar to what we spoke about within their criteria. And I'll just include a link in a quick email like, hey, I went ahead and I wanted to just send these over. Wasn't sure if you've seen these or not. Um, great meeting you today. Feel free to reach out. And I've had a lot of success doing that um, with the follow-up like immediately after my open house. So I don't forget. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, and just, just for perspective, you guys, um, Caitlin hosted um, a $6.99 open house, uh, one of Maria's listings. It's a new build. And then somebody came through, um, a lovely, a lovely gal, and um, they're now under contract um, at $6.24 on another one, right? And it's a very fast turnaround. Like people that are showing up to open houses, uh, they're generally needing to either buy or sell. Um, you know, I, I mean, there's always the weird ones that, you know, are looky loos and all of that. But within all of these people, there's plenty of people that are out there looking for a real house and a real realtor. Um, and adding that extra value is what sets you apart. And I, I see that with Caitlin every day. 
Yeah, with uh, here lately, I've been noticing that there's less looky loose. So just anticipating that it's probably a serious buyer or potential seller. So, you know, don't discount anyone. And this particular buyer, she had actually already had an agent. So when I was talking with her, she's like, yeah, I'm working with this guy and I was referred to him by a friend. Um, they weren't signed or anything, but she was like, he's just not really doing it for me. He's not providing any value. So when I sent that email after the open house, I got a call the very next morning and she's like, thank you so much for sending that. And yes, I do remember you. And I, there's a home that just came on the market today that I want to go check out. Like, are you willing to show me? So um, it's, it can be really easy when you can um, just ask the right questions and build the right rapport. I love that. Do the work like have instant follow-up, add value. Like you do those things, it's very hard to not get results. Love yeah, that. just know what you're talking about. Like be aware of the market so that you can just provide that immediate value and it becomes much easier. Right on, right on. Awesome, thanks Caitlin. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go down a slightly different route. Uh, I'm gonna go down a route where now you've got, you've got a lot of business. Uh, which a lot of us do because 140 pendings don't happen with people sitting around. You guys are up and at it. I see a bunch of you in the car already going to appointments and doing things. So super exciting. So now you have deals and uh, Casey is an expert on a specific topic that he's going to talk about this morning. Uh, Casey's our productivity coach in, uh, in Austin and, uh, Casey, do you ever have to give bad news? Yeah, yeah, I do. And uh, I don't think I'm the only one. Y'all let me know if I am. Uh, but actually, we're, we're kind of in a season where um, not everything is working out the way it always has, and not everything is working out the way we want it to, right? So I've got two topics here that are really related. They kind of end the same way. And it's really, it's kind of like bad news coming from uh, you know, two sides of one coin. One is you've got to deliver bad news. One is a client is trying to deliver bad news to you. And uh, you're, you got to be willing to take it and, and find a way to convert, right? So this is about retention and better conversion. Okay. So uh, a lot of people have shared scripts. I'm going to share a couple dialogues. Uh, and if you want to talk about the difference, you know, leadership or someone, if you want a script on both, let me know, reach out. Uh, Casey at BenKinneyTeam.com, feel free. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the first one is the art of delivering bad news. And so our goal when delivering bad news is to maintain our fiduciary relationship with professionalism. And then we're going to coach our clients through these tough decisions, right? A lot of us are scared and that turns into weakness when we're delivering bad news. And we, uh, we are not weak. We, uh, we, we step up to the plate when that happens, okay? So there's four steps to this if you're taking down bullet points. The first is the setup. And this is when you tell them you have bad news and you wait for them to prepare for the conversation, right? So prepare them and let them get ready. The, the second point is the delivery. So you tell them the facts of the matter and nothing more, right? You're not trying to sugarcoat it. You're not trying to soften it. You just tell them what's up. The third step is the silver lining. This is the toughest part. And that's basically where you try to take this bad news and share some positive that could go with the situation, right? Or even good news of how it could be worse, right? And then the fourth part is the consultation. And that's where you tell their options and how we're gonna move forward, right? And I, I really love taking a consultative approach. That's what this comes down to, right? It's you're the professional, you do the heavy lifting, and then they make the choice. So the setup sounds something like this. Hey guys, I wish this were a happier call, but I've got some bad news. Y'all in a place where we can talk about it? It really, it's, it's that simple. Another one would be, hey, sorry to say it, but we've just been presented with a challenge and we need to talk about it. You ready? So it's, it's just like that punchy, bad news is coming, get ready, okay? The delivery sounds something like this. Uh, let's say uh, your appraisal came in low. Okay, guys, the appraisal came in and it is lower than expected. I've already spoken to the other agent. They aren't going to make up the difference. Right? So, of course, we're going to call the other agent when that happens and find out if we can come together. We can't. They're not going to just take the hit. Right? So, we're going to have to find a solution. 
the silver lining, let's say you represent the, the seller here. It may not seem like it, but this could actually work in your favor moving forward. You can reduce your closing costs and protect your net at the end of the transaction. Right? So like if we end up negotiating with a low appraisal, they're going to save a little bit of money on closing costs. <laughs> right? Now, the last thing here is the consultation. And this is what I really want you to take away because the next one ends with this as well. And this is what I call a multiple choice close. After some careful thought and enlisting my whole team of seasoned agents, we believe you have three options. First, you could terminate, but then you don't get to go be with your grandkids in California, and that's not what anyone wants. Second, you could wait and do nothing. See if they call your bluff. It's not likely to get the result you want, but we could do that. Now, it could be worth a shot for a day or so, but I think we should move on to the third option, and that's where you take charge and start negotiation. We still have leverage, and this can help you capitalize on that. This option is most likely to help us move forward and find a win-win for everybody. Now, what would you like to do? Right, so you present them with three options and then it's up to them. And that's how you can really be, you know, a consultant and take that consultative approach. So this is, this is really how I deliver bad news. Um, I typed all this out. So if it sounds like I'm reading, I am, uh, because I wanna make sure that I get it right. Uh, but that is how I deliver this, okay? Now, this one is really good. This is my number one tool for retaining clients that are being overwhelmed and that are experiencing circumstances that are out of our control. You ever get a client who's like freaking out and there's nothing you can do about the things that they're freaking out about? This is how we handle that, okay? It's called Tactical Empathy and I 100% stole this from Chris Voss. If you've read Never Split the Difference, you know what I'm talking about. If you hadn't, you should. Uh, Natalie recommended this to me at uh, a Dallas Austin joint event. And I'm glad I took your recommendation, Natalie, because it's great. So here's what happens. Uh, a client calls you. Uh, in my example that I'll share, she said, hey, come get your sign. I'm done with this. Right? And so I said, hey, uh, I, I hear you. I can do that. But tell me what's up. And at that point, you let this client dump all over you emotionally right? And you just agree with the way that they feel. Ben talks about people pooping in your kitchen. You invite it. Come on, poop in my kitchen. And, and you just validate. Yep, absolutely. I would feel that way too. And you empathize with them to the point where you're like repeating back how they feel in your own words. And it's best if you can label it. Yeah, frustration. That's what I'm hearing. I feel like what I'm hearing is uh, you feel abandoned, right? You haven't had a call from me in five days. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can see how that would, that would make you feel like I'm not there for you. Wow, I, I apologize for that. Yeah, we haven't heard back from that offer. Um, yeah, it's been 28 hours. Uh, and that's, that can feel like a long time when it's your first, your first time. I can see how you're frustrated, right? And then that's when you can get to what's called that's right. Okay, getting to that's right is when you know they believe you respect them and you're listening. Using this tactical empathy and this strategic listening, active listening skills is how you get on their side of the table. Once you hear, yeah, that's right, that's how I feel. And it may take a couple tries, you can label it and you might be wrong. And they'll tell you when you're wrong, right? Then you're on the same side of the table and you're looking at the problem with them. Once, once you hear that's right, you're on the same side. And that's when you know you can move forward and offer a plan to overcome the real challenges that you're facing, right? So I'm gonna tell you a little story. Uh, there's a lady named Louisa. Uh, and a, a couple of the agents on our team have, have met Louisa and uh, may be cringing that I'm telling this story. Um, but I actually retained a list of using this. The first time I, I had just read the book and I was like, I'll just try it. And I've used it multiple times since with my clients and clients of our agents that I coach. Um, but this lady, she had a lot of hurt. She had a chip on her shoulder and uh, she had a, a few agents that went MIA, right? And so she had some baggage four times. She called me to get her sign, to get my sign rather. Uh, and I used tactical empathy to get to that's right. And eventually we saved the deal. We sold it. Um, other agents had failed. We got it sold for asking price. And uh, at closing, she thanked me with tears in her eyes. So um, 
anyway, I just want to summarize. You, you summarize how someone's feeling, you label their feelings, you get to that's right, and then you move forward in consultation. Those, those two skills are the ones that I'm using most to retain clients and to, to get that conversion where emotions might get in the way. I love that. I love that. Does anybody have any questions? Since we've got like, we've got like three minutes where we could, we could jump into any questions that you have. Um, Casey, that was really good. Thank you. So good. good. <laughs> so, yeah, that, uh, uh, no matter how, uh, no matter how many sales you've done, right? Like, I love, I love the, the, the perspective of once they say that's right, you're now on the same side until you're, until they believe that you're with them, you, you're opposite. They see you as the enemy. I love that. Okay. So we have so many scripts that came out of all of this. Um, I am getting so many private messages of, can you share this? Can you share this? Can you share this? The answer is yes. Yes, I can. Um, so what I'm going to do as soon as we, so what happens, I, once this ends, uh, the recording stops, it will take everything, um, that is in our zoom chat and it'll save that as well. And then, uh, the next thing that'll happen is I'll send this to my, uh, virtual assistant, Vanessa, and she'll grab any, anything from there that, that can be typed up. I'll ask anybody who shared today to share anything that they have typed up and I'll just do it all in one email. Um, and just send to everybody all at the same time today. Uh, so then that way, the goal is for you to just take, I don't, you don't need to have to take, you know, all of it. Like, and you shouldn't ever take everything. There's no possible, you only have 24 hours in a day. But if you take one thing, right, and, and you improve for the next two weeks, the next four weeks with that one thing, it'll make a significant difference. It's, it's never the people that go all in and all of a sudden, you know, they've improved 100%. That's not normal. Like you improve like 1%, 2% degrees at a time, right? Um, okay, so thank you everyone for sharing. This was super, super awesome. Um, and here's the next times I'm gonna see you guys um, in July. So July is a long month, uh, it feels like, and we've got 4th of July in there. Um, so I have two dates on the calendar for us to just get together uh, as Texas people. I have July 16th and July 30th. So July 16th and July 30th. Um, I have some guest speakers in mind uh, that I think will be great. So I'm really excited about uh, just, just getting us all together and then having something that will inspire us to move forward even more than we already are. Because we already rock and I'm already super proud of what we're doing. Last thing I want to talk about is referrals. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you guys out in this email um, the 2020 edition of the Texas Relocation Report. Um, came out. I'm gonna let me just. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. Can you guys see my screen right now? Yeah. Yes. Screen. Okay. Great. I didn't see much uh, head nods. Okay. So here's what the Texas Relocation Report, the 2020 edition, um, looks like. And uh, everybody's like heard the, this type of news, and this comes directly from TAR, from Texas Association of Realtors. The reason I want to share it with you guys, these, they've got really amazing slides in here that you can put to, in your listing presentation and buyer consultations, you guys. Um, specifically, like if you go down, like there's, um, let's see, Collin County, right? Like specific county-wide ones that, that would be really good. And especially because we're a nationwide team, it's important that people understand why listing with a nationwide team um, is really valuable as opposed to like a mom and pop shop or the neighborhood expert that sold two houses in the last two years in their neighborhood that they're calling the neighborhood expert. So I, I love these type of things because they add value and they are a third party endorsement. This, is, this isn't us saying how important it is. It's a third party that's saying how important it is. Um, and you can see that moving to Texas, we have our top five states are California, Florida, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and New York, right? And we've got teams in three of those states already. Um, so I wanted to share that with you guys. And also think back to what Elizabeth said earlier, like about building your relationships. These are the states you should have the most realtor relationships with. If you live in Texas, these are the states that have people moving to your area more than anywhere else, right? And um, 
the last thing I'm going to share with you guys is the number one source of relocations in Texas is not outside of the state of Texas. It is actually in Texas, right? It's Dallas people moving to San Antonio, San Antonio people moving. I don't know if they moved to Midland, but if they did, they'd go there, you know, Midland people moving to Austin, right? <laughs> right, right. But the, the point of the matter is, you guys, that, that we have a lot of cross- uh, pollination in, in the state of Texas. And so um, I love doing these power-ups uh, because we're reminded how big and powerful our organization is so that we can refer business to each other. And we're only, this is, this is, it's hard to see, but this is just like the beginning, you guys. This is, this is like, this is like step one. And like a year from now, we'll like double in size and that's good for all of us because it means there's more referrals on the table for all of us. So um, I'm excited about that. I'll shoot this over to you guys. And I am so glad to see you guys. Um, and for, for all the dads out there um, celebrating Father's Day this weekend, you guys are you're so awesome. Um, not only are you guys great business owners, great real estate agents, uh, but you guys I know have, have a lot going on outside of your career and we're really grateful for you guys and, and you inspire us and you make us want to all be better. So happy Father's Day and I will see everyone on July 16th. Have an awesome rest of your day. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.